Oh, it's all gone wrong already because I wasn't playing. There we go. You still got it wrong, honestly. Fire, fire the studio director. Oh, that would be me. Hello, I'm Stanford Chidge. This, of course, is the Chelsea Fancast, and the title of tonight's show is. I, I need to give this a bit of context because I thought actually Chelsea were quite Shakespearean against Leicester, and for most of the match, it was going to be called a comedy of errors, but it ended up being all's well that chill well. Chelsea Fancast number one one two zero. Welcome to a very disbelieving JK. Uh, you are a literary giant, Chidge. I don't know about that. I mean, you know, the puns, you know. Um, at, um, um, I thought you could have called it What You Will. That's one of the alternative titles to um, Twelfth Night. Yes. Um, the t- Taming of the Shrew. Yeah, the Taming of the of the Crew. Um, oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. oh. Yes, yes, yes. The disbelieving, yes. The uh, the uh, observing the game um, as to when the clown car was coming on, what stage it would be driven yeah. on, and it would collapse in laughter. Um, yes. and that's the complete idiocy of the uh, um, the uh, the attempt to somehow keep keep Leicester in it. You know, make it a spectacle. I was just thinking, what could you do to keep the opposition in it? Just to um, if you'd all been bribed by the by the FA Cup uh, by the um, the FA uh, to to make it a spectacle, I know what you do is just to get a um, somebody to take a penalty who normally does, or normally doesn't, I should say, and um, uh, and have somebody uh, boot the ball into their own net from forty yards away. That would be great. That would be fantastic. So it's things to do, but yes, yes. But, but what a peculiar, what a peculiar. Have we got a guest this week? What a peculiar time we have, Chid. Oh, no, we haven't got anybody today. Okay. Um, other than um, than uh, <laughs> uh, a touch of Italy. Oh. A considered word. Gate 17 himself. The nicest man we know. Yes. It is, yes. Of course, it is, of course, himself. Mr. I need to have a theme tune. I haven't got your theme tune, Marco. Um, Mr. Marco, what are you? Hey! I was Thank thinking, you. Get you, Italian. Get you, you know Italian. what it should be? It should be Mambo number five. Hey, Marco, Marco Italiano. Hey, Marco, Marco Italiano. That would be good, wouldn't it? Okay. okay. I'll, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll see that one out. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, lovely to see you, Marco. Saw you briefly uh, after the match. I think it, in fact, I bumped into you twice after the match, bizarrely. Yeah. How are you? How are you? You all right? I'm good, yeah, yeah. It was um, it was a good day out for the soul yesterday. Yeah, uh, great to see people. Yes, just reminds me. If you have a tough week in life, it's always nice to reconnect with your Chelsea friends on a match day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's a tonic. It's a tonic. Yeah. Uh, now, the eagle-eared of you will, will already know that the, the show is a shambles because I managed to screw up the beginning completely by not paying attention. Uh, I've also forgotten to do the customary welcome to the show, which of course is welcome to the Chelsea fan cast fueled by Guinness, powered by celery. And actually, it's even worse that I forgot to do it today because I had something special lined up for you because um, I met uh, I met the lovely Matt Jazz and Christoph in the cock. Now, Matt Jazz is well, they're both from Slovenia. And they're lovely. And I've known Matt Jazz through Twitter for donkeys. He's been listening to the show forever and ever and ever and ever. Uh, I finally met up with him yesterday. Marco's met him every time he's been over. Uh, anyway, I did something that I think will hopefully amuse you. It's very quick, so I might have to play it several times. But basically, I got Christoph to say, uh, fueled by Guinness, powered by celery <laughs> in, in Slovenian. And and here it is. Ready? Don't blink. You'll miss it. Guinness or Pogons, pomocio zelene. Do you want that again? Just for the because it's quick. Guinness or Pogons, pomocio zelene. Sounds like that. Sounds like something on the being played backwards on a Judas Priest album. I know, it? I know, I know. I, I promised Christoph it would go in the show. If he, well, no, the reason I did it actually because I'm talking to Christoph and, and Matt Jazz, um, and they were both very 
eager to to see JK. And I said, well, I'm afraid JK doesn't doesn't grace us with his presence in the pub. I mean, you know, he's too busy <laughs> too busy eating roast swan and uh, and vegetable juices. But uh, um, but the reason they wanted to meet JK, apart from the obvious, is that Christoph is in fact a voiceover artist in Slovenia, which wow. is why I got him. To do that, to do, yeah. So, he sounded, uh, so he sounded good. He sounded good. I reckon he's good too. He did three takes for me, and he was better each one. He took my direction well. One more time, ready? Guinness or Pogons, Yeah, you, you can do that at the end. Yeah, of the yeah. Upward inflection, you know. Yeah, slightly. I think he's saying. I think he's saying. J.K. looks like Robert De Zerby. <laughs> I think he looks like the master of Doctor Who, actually. Oh, yeah, which, yeah. Yeah, which one? Excuse me, Roger Delgado or um, yeah, Roger Delgado or, or Tony Ainley? Roger Delgado, mate. Roger Delgado, yes, because Tony Ainley, who was the second master, um, uh, I used to play cricket with, and he was completely barking. So every time I saw him on Doctor Who, I thought, yes, this makes sense because he's. he's his master was slightly barking, whereas uh, Roger Delgado, I always felt was it didn't seem to me the most uh, uh, the villainous, most villainous man in the universe, but rather a lovely man saying his lines, you know. And uh, oh, I may have to kill you later. You just thought, nah, it's not working for me. Whereas, uh, whereas uh, Ainley was, ah, I may have to kill you later. And I'm thinking, yes, you will, Tony, because you are completely barking. But, um, but yes, thank you. Yes, there is a touch of that. I saw that earlier on. Funnily enough, Chidge, I thought. Roger Delgado, the master. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're honing it well. Now, the other thing that happened on uh, Saturday, there will be, we will talk about a football match in a minute, uh, but uh, the other thing that happened uh, was that both Richard Schaller and I uh, were basically live models for the much-promised and awaited Chelsea Fancast T-shirt, uh, which is uh, this little beauty here. If they sell Connor, we riot. And there you go. Nice little pic of me in the pub, uh, armed with a Guinness, of course, and uh, and said T-shirt as well. Uh, I mean, how how utterly how utterly delightful are they? I mean, they really are. I, I, I'm so pleased. And people have been responding to these very, very well. We've got a lot of love on Twitter. And then and then, uh, you know, they, I think a lot of people want one, which is excellent news. So there we go. If you it's now live at the website selling the T-shirts. Which is basically the Chelsea Fancast website is now live, so you can order them. Just go to chelseafancast.com forward slash category forward slash merchandise, uh, and uh, there's we've only got two bits on sale at the moment. One is the T-shirt, which you can see there. Uh, we've also got mugs uh, adorning the same beautiful image of Connor with "If they sell Connor, we riot." Um, what can I? What else can I tell you? Twenty-five quid for the T-shirts in, in the UK. That includes postage and packing. 15 quid, including postage and packing for the mugs. I think 28 uh, for Europe and 30 quid for the USA because it's it's expensive to get them to these places. That's why the price goes up. So I'm sorry about that. That's not a lot we can do. Um, ultimately, when you've decided what you want, what size you want, and all that kind of thing, you email the Chelsea special at gmail.com with your name and address and obviously your size. Uh, and then you pay to the same email address that you pay via PayPal. Make sure when you pay via PayPal, you choose the friends and family uh, kind of selection. I can't remember quite how that works. But anyway, friends and family. Otherwise, we get clobbered with the, they take half of the money. We can't have that. So there you go. If they sell Connor, we riot. Beautiful T-shirts modeled by, uh, uh, I think, what can only really be described, gentlemen, as a supermodel. I'm sure you would agree. Silence. <laughs> Looking very dapper there, Chid. Thank you, Marco. You can see Dan Dan Silves in the back. Yeah, he's looking on in awe. He you're is always, indeed. You always go with a hat, Chidge. You always you wear a wear a tile well, don't you? A tile? Yes. Where did you get that hat? Where did you get that tile? Oh, I didn't know that. Really, a lobby one was a certain style. Yes, it, that's it's it's called a tile as well as a hat. Is it? I've always been. I've, I, it's become a trademark. It's a football thing. Actually, I wear it all the time. To be honest, I don't know why. Because actually, most of my mates, with apologies to you two, most of my mates who wear flat caps tend to be. Uh, well, lacking in the hair department, whereas I have loads. But it keeps it keeps me head warm, really. That's kind of why, and it's rather stylish and dapper, as you said. So there you go. That's so I kind of JK, isn't it? Any old diet, any, any old diet, any any, any, any neat talk oh. about. You look dapper before you nap it to your feet. Red. Well, a new tile. Yeah, lovely. Okay, so there we go. So we've done all the this. That's officially the intro, really. Now, as ever, 
Don't forget you can listen to the show live. <laughs> live. Every Monday and Friday at around 7.30 p.m. But going to Mixler, uh, which is chelsea-fancast.mixler.com, where, of course, you can join in the chat by posting on the live chat page. But, 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 as you will probably realize, because you can see us in our in all of our glory. My, why is my arm disappearing? All very odd. It's very, you know, very Doctor Who. It's actually very Doctor Who 1970s graphics, really, as in shit. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? It's like the early stages of chroma key. Anyway, yes, we are we are on YouTube and uh, simultaneously on Facebook Live, where we stream the show live, bitch, live. Right, uh, but if you prefer to listen to the show live, live on uh, let's uh, just go search for Chelsea Fancast for YouTube and Facebook. There we go. Uh, the U- YouTube, of course, and Facebook both have their own chat channel, so we can keep an eye on what you lot are saying about us. So don't think you can get away with it because you won't. Uh, of course, we will upload this as a podcast very shortly after finishing the show. Uh, and of course, that will be available on ACAS, Spotify, Apple, and all good podcast platforms and all the rubbish ones too. Uh, so make sure you like, subscribe, and leave us a glowing five-star review. Now, the only other thing we usually plug at the beginning of the show is, of course, Patreon. So if you want to join the Chelsea Fancast, Patreon and bung us money every month. It's delightful. Uh, free money for us. Wonderful. Uh, it's just really just a way for you to show your support, which is always very greatly appreciated. Um, the other thing is, if you do, if you do choose to do so, we will, of course, if you want one, send you a mini Kerry Dixon banner. I'm going to grab the one that hangs in the Matty Harding end. And of course, you can join our Discord group, which is why I always mention this now, because Discord is basically like 24-7 Mixler. So everybody's at it all week chatting about Chelsea. And there's a bloody good group of people in there. I mean, basically, look at the chat room that you're in now and imagine that every day of the week and you pretty much got it. They're all absolutely bloody marvellous. And I love them all like they were my own family. Right now, we will be talking about Chelsea versus Leicester after this. go that kind of that kind of needs like video of people bouncing up and down going (laughs) mental doesn't it i might i might nick that clip from the wonderful uh you took all that video of that famous leeds 5-1 i I think that's been plundered some i've seen it everywhere that yeah it's absolutely beautiful do you know what i mean i know we're diving off (coughs) there's a photograph of that which you know of our our away end that night and of course being yorkshire it was damp and uh and it was very old school. So again, apologies to those with with, with uh, less hair. There are a lot of bald pates in oh, that, stop, that crowd, stop. and and the steam was rising off the Chelsea end. It looked like a scene from Les Misérables. It's absolutely delightful. The menace hung in the air in the mist that was created by the Chelsea away end. It was wonderful. Anyway, uh, enough. Uh, now listen, I know I know that we're, we're going to be accused of being miserable, negative, and depressing because we did actually win four two. We are in an FA Cup semi-final. We will be talking about that. Do not worry. Um, and I'm delighted that we that we are in an FA Cup semi-final. But I mean, we do have to start talking about Raheem Sterling. I mean, I didn't pick him in my side. You all know why. I don't think Pot should have picked him either. But I mean, he had an absolute shocker. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about the the penalty first. I mean, J.K. I, I don't know what happened because we're obviously we're not on the pitch with them, but I, I, I have a suspicion that he kind of grabbed it. Either he grabbed it off Palmer because he wanted to take it or Palmer gave it to him because he wanted to give him confidence. But either way, Palmer's the, the, the designated penalty taker. And I think I think if, if, if that happened, you know, uh, Connor Gallagher's at fault here too. He's the captain. He should have said, mate, sorry, Palmer's the uh, the penalty taker. He's taking it. I, I mean, it was, and I I knew he was going to miss it, mate. I kn- I knew he was going to miss it. Did you? Yes, it was absolutely obvious that he was going to miss it. His body language was all wrong. Um, I actually think it was a it was um, deliberate. 
because they also what, deliberately missed it. No, no, they didn't. No, no I, I will rewind. I re rephrase it. It's a shambles, mate. Uh, yeah, yeah, pass it. But I think um, he was deliberately um, allowed to take the free kick, the penalty. I'll start again. I think uh, it was okay with Potts that he would take the penalty, mainly because he then took the free kick later on, if you remember, when they set it up. And they'd clearly worked that free kick out because all the Chelsea players dived to allow him to place it into the into an area, or whether that was Not something... Rosette of the Matthew Harding upper. It did, which he did. It's, I've got it in my garden. It landed here. So I, I it was... I, I So I actually thought that that was a, um, an effort to get him to to engage more, to be more confident. Are you not that you'd ever want to do that in a um, in an FA Cup six round tie to give somebody some confidence? But I didn't think he grabbed it from from Palmer. I thought he it, that was the deal. He would take the penalty. Um, uh, but, uh, whether he pulled rank, I don't know because he's one of the senior players. But um, uh, he looked really un un not. Uh, he just looked shaky taking the penalty. He just ran up to it badly, and you knew we all knew, all of us knew. He was going to miss it. It was just a. I, I felt every single person in the ground knew he was going to miss it. So, you know, it's what happened. But um, uh, I, I find it. Um, Poch got very, very spiky about when um, uh, when he was talking about the, the the fans, saying they've just got to accept his decisions in the the, the it, when he was uh, interviewed. Oh, the coach. Yeah, yeah, and I so and I. And he, he, yes, exactly, exactly. And I, I'm afraid um, it's the first time I've heard him be uh, aggressive towards the fans. It's not endearing to have your manager say that about us. That we. In a what, sense... did he, what did he say to the fans then? Sorry, I missed that. Whoa, 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 whoa. We rewind, we rewind. No, he, he, he basically said, he came out and said that um, I'm the coach and it's my decision. So... You know, and that's it. He, he was pretty blunt and to the point about it. But his decision to what? Let Sterling take the penalty? Well, no, no. I, I, think, I, I think it was just a general um, comment about Sterling full stop and be, right. being in the team, not, not, him. not just the penalty. Yeah. 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 Yes, I remember because if Mike has said that Palmer picked the ball up, he did, he did pick the ball up, but I'm not sure that he was. Um, uh, they then debated who was going to take it. Now, what happens in this instance? Does does Sterling have first dibs because he's older than him because he's one of the more experienced players? It seemed, but it, in, in, but there was a repeat of that later on when um, when the penalty that wasn't became a free kick because uh, Palmer clearly had the ball to take that penalty and VAR overruled it. Yeah. And they set up for a free kick, didn't they? Which, yeah. which Sterling put into West Brompton Cemetery. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But it looked so, to me as if the, the free kick was obviously set up. Over the ball as well. He did what? Sorry, he did what? Sorry. Palmer and um, Sterling um, were involved in that free kick, and Sterling ended up taking it. But it looked as if the only person who could take it would be Sterling. Because Palmer didn't actually exhibit any kind of movement, and when you saw the layout of what was happening on the pitch, the two Chelsea players in the wall who ran away were there for, for I suppose they could have been there for Palmer's left foot, but he would have then taken the ball away from the goal. So it was a right footer was going to take it to place it into the corner away from the two players, and that's where he aimed it, Sterling, and it went, it went out. So I felt it was something that they'd actually practiced. It looked to me because the two players fell out of the wall. And it's then a hole for the right footer to try and curl it into the corner. Mate, I mean, that there are misses and then there are misses. And I mean, I, I wondered if he if he'd, if he'd slipped or something. It was such a bad shank, but he, I don't think he did. I mean, it's interesting what you say about Poch. I'd miss that uh, for various reasons, um, largely because I was in the pub, I suspect. But, um, you know, I, I, there were people that were saying that, you know, when uh, I mean, when Mudrick was taken off uh, and, and Chuck Wameka came on, um, I mean, everybody wanted Sterling off, and a lot of there was a lot of booing and a lot of you oh, don't that, know what you're doing around that, that wasn't there? That that was it, wasn't it? That was kind of the um, the trigger point yeah. for the ire towards uh, Pochettino. 
Well, that's uh, him being stubborn, I think, Marco, is, is kind of what yeah, you were well, saying. He's coming out saying that as well. He said he was tired. He said, he, he said Mudrick was tired, he said. Yeah, I, honestly, he, he, that kid could run all night. You know, there's no – he was one of our most effective players. I mean, admittedly, you know, Carney was a good sub to bring on, but – I'm sure it would have been more effective if he'd come on for Sterling. But, you know, at the end of the day, I I don't sort of, I don't like it when the crowd start booing players in, in the way Sterling gets booed now it, 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 because it's kind of premeditated. You know, if, if he, the slightest error and you can hear people sort of getting on his back, um, and it doesn't take much for that to escalate. But I, I, I don't know. I, 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 will Sterling be here next season anyway? I doubt it. He uh, wants to be, apparently. Does he? Apparently so. Apparently he's got no thoughts of going anywhere. He's got, what, two years left on his contract? Uh, who knows? Who knows? I'm desperately trying to find this. Uh, there's a really good article by uh, by Jonathan Wilson in The Guardian, which, which sums... Uh, well, both Chelsea and uh, and Sterling up beautifully. And, of course, I can't speed read because I'm getting too old for this kind of shit. Uh, Sterling was in one of those moods in which he could do... Okay, right. Let's see if I can find the first bit of that because it's actually really, really funny. Uh, I can't. I can't find it. Fucking annoying. Anyway, I mean, he basically said Sterling was in one of those moods where he can't, you know, hit a cow's ass with a banjo. Oh, there we go. I've got it. There was a decent chance created for Sterling, although Sterling was in one of those moods in which almost no chance for him is a good chance. And then he says, uh, and then it was a, his surge onto Sterling's ball and, bu and burst past Vestergaard, for Sterling was in one of those moods in which he could do extremely useful things with the ball, so long as it didn't actually involve him scoring. And I just thought that that was beautifully put. Um, I mean, and that's the thing with Sterling. He had an absolute shocker. Uh, that penalty, I mean, you know, you go 2-0 up then, you would have thought, and, and early on, you know, that's kind of should be game over. Uh, that free kick, I mean, you know, sometimes they go in, sometimes they don't. I've seen Sterling score them. You know, he scored an absolute world. He didn't. I think it was against Wolves. Newcastle. Um, Newcastle. Newcastle. Thanks, JK. But, you know, that 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 happens, I know. But I mean, it was a horrible miss. And given what had happened before, he had that one where he was one-on-one, -on -one, put it past the post. And then there's all the other Sterling stuff. But he also does good things. He did create an assist. Uh, he's not completely, utterly useless. I wonder if so much of this is to do with everything else that's going on around the club, the owners, the stuff that we don't like about that, the general malaise. And and you know what? You know what supporters are like. They like to find somebody to target. And I wonder if, you know, and also the fact that he's he's experienced. So you kind of expect a lot better from him. I wonder if that's why he draws their ire. But I have to say, I'm with Marco JK. I mean, I, I, I mean, it actually was really interesting because I noticed this down in my notes. He got met with a cacophony of boos as he got substituted, and then it turned into applause. So I think a lot of people like me, I don't like booing players. It can't can't possibly do them any good. I mean, I, I showed my disapproval by not applauding him. That's enough for me. But I think, I mean, you know, I'm not going to tell people what to do. They pay their money. They can do what the hell they like. But I'm telling you now, I don't think it does any good booing Chelsea players. And, you know, we should try and avoid it, really, shouldn't we, JK? I thought what happened was that, that people then applaud because they don't like him being booed. Well, exactly. You know, as if to say they're I saying... People were applauding because Madureki was coming on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's a bit worrying, though, isn't it? Madureki comes on and scores practically immediately. Yeah. No, I, I but... Just... That, that game yesterday, for me, um, maybe barring the result, but it just it sums up the, 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 the chaos of Chelsea since, since the sanctions and the change of ownership. I mean, literally, it's not glorious unpredictability. It's just, frankly, bizarre. You know, you, give, you play well, go 2-0 up, and then it's almost like, right, well, we've got a two-goal lead. Let's give them two back and, and then play well. again. It's absolutely I, insane. What was worse, Marco? I mean, we were exasperated at half time. I was talking to one of the chaps who sits near me. And I mean, I, you know, we scored a great goal early. The Super Poodle, well done to the Super Poodle, scores a Chilwell type goal. Loved it. 
And then that fantastic goal by by Palmer. They 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 did a really good number on. Uh, I mean, I watched the game again when I got home, and uh, in the studio they were very. I mean, Jimmy Floyd Hatzelback was on, which is always lovely because. Uh, you know, um, I always like what Jimmy has to say, but he said he did particularly well because he got across his uh, his marker to get there first, and he kind of ran diagonally across the box rather than going to the far post like a lot of people would have done. So he's got great instincts. Ice cold Palmer, love him. But as I was, I was saying to the boys in front of me, we should have been four nil up at half time. You know, you had the penalty in, and you had the other miss that Sterling did four nil up at half time because I think we were that good for it, and it should have it should have been over at two nil, let alone being four nil up, and then what I've called the Dizazi Honorary Frank Sinclair Own Goal, Marco. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Discuss. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, it's interesting because, I mean, obviously you know where I sit, so I've kind of like, we were along the pitch but up the other end. Um, and it, it just it just looked bizarre. Um, but, but subsequently to that, you know, <laughs> you kind of watch it on TV and there's, a few other things going on, and we haven't mentioned Sanchez yet. Uh, in, Let's in... mention him now, Marco, because who, yeah. who's, who's at fault for that? Is it Dizazi or Sanchez? Well, I think it's a bit of both, to be honest yeah. with you. Um, nevertheless, uh, I mean, it was it was spectacular. Uh, I mean, I don't think Dizazi will, will score a better goal in the, in the rest of his career. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, the whole Sanchez thing. Um, I mean, my mum was going loopy about it. Why is he playing Sanchez? And I'm going, the <laughs> FA Cup, mum. Well, I don't bloody care. You tell him. I said, all right, I'll ring him up. <laughs> uh, she's not wrong, Marco. Again, I didn't pick him in, in the side on, on my side on Friday, did I? In fact, I didn't pick Cucurella, Sterling, or, or Sanchez, JK. Although I, I did, did. You, I did. You didn't pick Sanchez. Did. Well, oh, fuck me. I thought I, more for fair, you. I thought Cucurella had a decent game. To be totally, fair. absolutely uh, right. I know, took it, it all back. I took it all back about Cucurella, but not with Sanchez and Sterling. Yeah, I mean, you know, overall, I know all we've spoken about uh, kind of the negative sides of the game. I mean, I, I just game on game. There, there are quite a few positives to take out of what's going on there. They will, um, be. but but they I, will be. you know, I, I just don't know the mindset of the owners, and you know, they've now got the, this plan to have was it two under twenty three players in every position. Um, I'm still not, I'm still not sold on the idea of just buying kids all the way through. You know, I, I think. Part of the reason Pochettino plays Sterling is because he's, you know, he's basically an old head um, in in amongst a lot of younger players. Um, and I think that's part of the reason why he starts him. Um, I think what's interesting is, you know, Nicholas Jackson, since he's come back into the team, he's kind of lost that petulance that he had at the start of the season where he was getting booked in every game, or whether that's, you know, sort of Sterling's had a word with him or I, I don't know. But, you know, I think maybe that is part of the reason why Sterling's getting a game um, so, so frequently and, and why Pochettino's adamant that he's the coach and he decides who plays. Um, I, I don't know. But it is just... Uh, you know, there are positives. There are a lot of positives, I thought, yesterday. Oh, no, they were. They were, they were, they were. But Can unfortunately, I... the negatives are so spectacular that they kind of undermine... Well, we're, 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 skittish, we're skittish as supporters because of everything that's been going on. Sorry, JK, you wanted to come in, mate? Well, I, first of all, um, Jackson almost got himself booked by, by, during the penalty, going over and cleaning his boots on the Yeah, post. what was that all about? But he was just getting in the in the goalkeeper's face. He was cheating. <laughs> I can't agree with you at all, there, Marco. <laughs> he, he Mate, I, the... I love that. I love that. I love him. I'm falling in love with Jackson. I know, he's he, an awkward he fucker, honest, isn't he? You can't say that that's normal behaviour, you know? Can you? He banged uh, the goalpost to get the mud off them. He went up. He was winding that. the keeper up, wasn't he? Completely winding the keeper up. And I the love it, mate. The referee threatened him. The referee threatened him with the booking. 
But he didn't get a booking, did he? No, but it, it, luckily he didn't because he didn't push it as far as he normally does. Because normally he'd have said something to the referee as well, or the goalkeeper. He'd have gone back and spoke to the goalkeeper. Then it would have been a yellow. He, card. he had a bit of a, a bit of a row with Winks as well at the other end. Uh, yeah, yeah, he did, they, yeah. They crashed into the. I think they crashed into the 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 perimeter boards, and and I think maybe Jackson left a little bit on Winks. Good ex Spurs. Absolutely I think right. Went up to him and actually tried to help him, and he then kicked him, which I thought was yeah. a bit unfair. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I, I, I am warming. I am warming to him. There's, a, I think, I think that Guardian article that I mentioned by Jonathan Wilson is is ostensibly reviewing the game, but it was also giving a lot of love to Jackson, actually saying he's he's improving, yeah. and I agree with that. Um, look, let's go I, back. Chich, because I think his ability to come and bring the ball is deceptive because he gets to the byline very well. But as we've said before, it's when he comes in as a winger. If he's going straight down the yeah. pitch, he always yeah. seems to get caught. Um, and the other problem with Mudrick is he still shows too much of the ball when he goes right because he got dispossessed from time to time. But the, the other thing to remember is I, I actually thought that, that Leicester were dreadful. And I, I'm, I'm, I thought there was bad. Uh, yeah, but all over. I just I don't think, you know, I'm I'm intrigued as to the standard of football in the championship at the moment, because both those teams, Leeds and Leicester, if they get up, will come straight down again, unless they purchase about four or five players. Well, I, they, may, I, they may very I, well do. You know? I would I would say that that goal that um, Mavadidi scored oh, was great. great. Well, yeah, but, uh, well, 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 actually, that that relates that relates to what I wanted to talk about, which is Sanchez, because, you know, Oh. I mean, I think I think that the, I, I don't I mean, look, he, he shouldn't have been where he was when Dezazi hit that ball. But Dezazi should have looked. So I think probably both culpable, but more so Dezazi. And I looked at the second goal by Mavadidi and I thought, fuck, that's a good goal. But I did wonder, I did wonder, was Sanchez slightly out of position? He was quite a long way over to the right. And you had a lot of bodies on the right. So it would have been very unlikely that he could have pinged it in to the right post maybe he should have been a bit more central and then he might have been able to save that curler it was a good goal though to be fair it was a very good goal but it was very it was very simple because nobody really challenged um who was it was the challenge i thought it was gusto it was, gusto. Was, a bit, yeah, it was. was gusto was that a the only time he skinned him in the whole game yeah 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 and he should have he should have been aware that that um, you should have tried to push him wide obviously is what you're going to do with that situation so you don't get a shot particularly if he's right footed i mean that's the it, that it, it's it's the it's the suckers punch really there you've been you've been lured and the the forward then pushes you to the left and then fires it round because he's got the the, the perfect ankle i remember that guppy goal for, for <gasps> round, <laughs> round, exactly, round dewberry to make it one one do you remember that yeah in the yeah, in the league game, 1998 i I, oh, I know i know his i know his cousin i know i used to work with his cousin and when i found out when i found out uh that she was indeed his cousin. The first thing I said, well, I didn't, I mean, you know, she had the same name, so the clue was in the name, but I said, I don't know. I don't know if I can speak to you anymore because I said that goal is still pierced my heart from many years ago. It is interesting how certain goals just stay with you. And that that one, that, that cost us the title. I'm sure of it. Well, it, it contributed to sure Viali's decision not to push for the for the rest know, of the season. Let's, that let's, always... right, let's if, you want hear, if you want to hear what you, we think about that, listen to the 50 Years of Chelsea episode uh, whatever year it was. Anyway, going back to Sanchez, um, Marco, you, I love your mum. You, you know that anyway, but I particularly love her for her comment because I asked the same question. Why on earth does Pochettino pick Sanchez? Who, who, apart from the two instances I mentioned, there was another one where he came out for the ball and completely missed it. Uh, yeah. he, almost, he almost conceded a goal because he, he sat there dithering and they pressed him. Why does he pick him when Petrovic is so much better? Clearly, I don't know. I mean, you, you could argue that it's it's just par for the course, isn't it? Playing, giving your number two keeper um, a run out in cup games. I mean, obviously, <clears throat> it'll be interesting to see what happens come the semi-final when we play Manchester City, because uh, I think he could cost us a game quite easily yes. against that calibre of opposition. And, you know, that that that... The, the, the uh, when he came out, that we were dead dead online with that, and and I said it, it reminded me of like a kid trying to shoot clay pigeons and not realizing that you've got to put the gun sort of a couple of yards in front of the clay and, and pull the trigger. He kind of just <laughs> went, came out and the ball had, the ball had already gone. <laughs> it, was, it was it was the other side of the penalty area. But yeah, I, I don't know. 
I think I think the other thing that's interesting about the whole Sanchez thing, everybody still gets nervous when they try to play the ball out from the back, even when Petrovic is in goal. Um, I think the best example I saw of that at Stamford Bridge was actually when we played Leeds. Um, Melier, their, their keeper, is, is clearly a very good footballer um, and knew exactly what he was doing. And they, they were able to sweep the ball out from the back playing one-touch football, um, kind of the way, you know, City do it. But, you know, every time Chelsea try that, especially with Sanchez there, you're just thinking, oh, my God, what's going to happen now? Um, it's just, I, I don't know. I don't get, what I don't get is Pochettino watches all these games back with his coaches. Surely they must be having the same conversations that we have saying, hmm, bit of a risk that. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and the same name keeps cropping up every time the, 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 you know, it's a bit of a risk. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out, won't we? I mean, it's a couple of weeks of an international break. Right? always, to me, seems to be the most uncomfortable in that situation when the ball is given to him because frequently it's after two or three passes and he's in the corner. You just think, why? In fact, there's one occasion when he was in the corner. I think it was for he then managed to pass the ball and Palmer got hold of it. And when Palmer gets hold of it, you think, yeah, he, he, he knows what to do in those situations. He just pauses or waits or flicks it off. It's rarely caught. And the idea behind all of this is you lure them on if they're pressing. And then because they've got all the players up, you've beaten the press. And you're then playing against three defenders and there are four or five of you. And so you've got the advantage. But when every time you do it, it causes panic amongst the defence. And as I say, De Sazi is like a rabbit in the headlights on so many occasions with this. You know, they need to practice it more or rely slightly more heavily on on trying to find a target man up front. Unfortunately, it's frequently Sterling or it's frequently yeah. Jackson. That's it, you know, and they're not well, Jack they're Jackson's not, better as, a, as a holding it up than Sterling. You know, he's got no, he's, he's improved. He got the ball to the head a couple of times it, 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 his head and flicked it on. No, I, so the, the, once again, there's progress being made here, but but this is such an obvious thing. And I worked out the other day and I kept saying, why aren't we pressing as much? Well, the reason we're not pressing as much is because the opposition find it very easy to press, to, to pass past us. And the second you do that, then we're the ones having to cope with their attack. So if you just sit back slightly on it and only the odd person presses, they're not going to be able to do that. All they're going to have to do is play a longish ball into the middle where you've got, got it covered by the midfield. So it makes sense, but it just isn't the way that the top teams are playing because the top teams press. Well, One I of think the reasons because they've got this ability themselves to play like City, play brilliantly out from defence. Yeah, the, 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 the essential difference is, is qualitative. Um, we have too many players uh, who play for Chelsea at the moment who are not comfortable enough in possession. Yeah, so, absolutely. I mean, Moises receives the ball uh, and a good defensive midfielder will be able to protect, shield the ball, you know, either uh, muscle the opposition out of the way or, or turn or whatever before he gives it. Connor is probably the best in the entire side at doing that, by the way, as well as winning the ball back. But, you know, you've got a lot of players in there who just are not capable of doing that. And if you look at the difference between a, a championship side and a Premier League side, generally that's that's one of the, the marked differences. They're not, they're not comfortable in possession. I mean, you could also say that championship sides can't finish their dinner. Uh, sounds a bit like Chelsea, really, doesn't it? We're going to dwell on that uh, because we're going to change the subject very quickly because, of course... Uh, it's time to mention, of course, everybody's favourite fanzine and to remind you that the CFC UK stall is in... Whoops, that was... See, I've done it again. Absolute fucking shambles. Should we try that one? Should we try that one? I'm going to... Actually, you know what? From now on, I'm going to pretend that we actually have a studio director. So every time I do something stupid, I can go, Oi, sort it out! You know, and then I'll, I can be exonerated from any any blame. But uh, What can we call uh, him, Chief? Let's call him Len. Len, we, no, no, no. There's no, no way a studio director is going to be called Len. <laughs> I'm gonna. Should I think of somebody I used to work with that I really didn't like? Yeah, I'm gonna think on that. Yeah, because yeah, that, that that's that's how we'll use and abuse it. Anyway, um, yeah, the CFC UK stall, as as you all know, is open for business every home match, which of course means that you can get a copy of everybody's favourite fanzine in person opposite Fulham Broadway, um, and you can also subscribe to CFC UK by doing the following. 
Email fanzine at cfcuk.net. Uh, and then you can subscribe by paying 20 quid a year in the UK, 45 quid a year in Europe, and 60 quid a year at the rest of the world. Alternatively, you can actually get a digital copy. DJ will email you a PDF for six quid a year or a pound each. You can pay all of that via PayPal. Now, Marco, um, is there a new one? Uh, is, is there a deadline offing next Friday? Yeah. Have, I, have I missed the memo or something? This Friday. Shit. This Friday's the deadline. I missed um, the memo, didn't I? How did I miss the memo? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. It's been circulated a couple of times. I think DJ cryptically, because we had 100 fanzines left yesterday, and I said, what are we going to do with those? And he said, keep them for Burnley. So I don't know what that means. Um, the, the next edition's actually going to be out for the Burnley game or the game after that. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I I'm better right. write one. I better write one. I got a couple in the pipe. But I, you know, you know, I don't know how you. I don't know how. I shall. I'll ask you this because I, 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 I am not worthy when it comes to writing compared to you, my friend. Um, but w- what I do with my CFC UKs is I come up with a title, and I generally have a clue what it's about. Like there'll be a, a theme to it, and I just write the title in my notes on my phone. And then I forget all about it. And then when the, when I on a Friday at about ten o'clock, when I've put this podcast to bed, I think shit, I've got to write my CFC UK article. And oh, I go back through my notes for the title. And I go, what the <laughs> hell was that all? About? Oh, I know. And off I go. I mean, how how? <laughs> it's just it's just like everything I do, Marco. It's a shambles, isn't it? It's a shambles. But what I mean, how do you approach it? Um, I think it depends. I, if I'm going to write, if if something's happened in the you know, in the intervening space of the law or, or get or the deadline being issued. Obviously, if, if it's something topical, then <laughs> that kind of fuels the brain cells to, to to write about that. But if it if it's something um, a bit left left of centre, uh, then yeah, I, I, I tend I, I'll sort of think of something. Well, that be that might be an interesting article. Like, I mean, the last one, the one in the current edition, um, which is about the Jekyll and Hyde thing. Um, so I just had the title. I thought, yeah, just call it Jekyll and Hyde and come up with some anecdotes about Chelsea being Jekyll and Hyde. But, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's kind of whatever's going on in my head. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I try and sort of sit down and I, I, I make – I make it. I do actually make a time. I put in my diary. Right, you're going to write your CFC UK article, uh, then, and then I tr- and I try and do it all in one sitting, um, just so it, it sort of flows onto the page yeah. from what I'm thinking. Uh, but I mean, that's just the way I do it. I'm, I'm, go. I've got a bit, of, obviously, a bit of OCD when it comes to all things writing. So. Um, yeah, I, it's it's kind of it's a bit of a bit of a structure and routine yeah. to it. It's the way to do it. You are the master, and I am terrible. But you see, I was always like this. I was like this with my exams. Everything that I've ever done, I'm I am Mister Deadline Merchant, you know. But I, I I have I have a theory that, in a funny sense, it it it, it kind of it lances the boil of my creativity. I, I have to have that pressure, you know, to do it. And oh, when I do oh, when oh, I do oh, sit oh, down oh, and oh, you what what. A fabulous expression. <laughs> well, Love the you... boil of creativity. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Wait, you, should write, you should write that down and put that in your article. Yeah, put that in your article, mate. Anyway, <laughs> enough of this self-congratulations nonsense. Go and buy a copy of the CFC UK. I mean, it, honestly, it's I mean, only a pound. it's only a pound. And I mean, the quality of writers in that fanzine. I mean, DJ deserves an OBE for his efforts. It's He's he's collected a very very and it's always been like that. I mean, people like Martin King, Martin Knight, uh, John King, sorry, Martin Knight used to write for the fans, and he's had some unbelievably good writers. Now, the other thing, of course, you know what you need to do is buy one of these. Yes, that would be a uh, sign. That is actually signed by Frank Lampard, if I, if I'm not mistaken. A Chelsea pitch owner's share. Very important thing this is because if you get one of these, uh, you will. Uh, have a share of the freehold of the stadium. You will own a bit of Chelsea. What more could you want? Uh, and of course, what that means is that uh, nothing can happen to the stadium or the ground unless the CPO shareholders 
uh, vote and agree. I think you need more than 75% to, to, to have a, an agreement on, on moving the ground, relocating the ground, whatever, you know, needs to happen. Now, of course, this is going to be important because this, this could well happen very soon. You know, the, the owners have promised us a nice, shiny new stadium. Um, hopefully at Stamford Bridge. If not, they might need to or, or look to move elsewhere. So, you know, I mean, it, 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 we're not, they're not a bunch of kind of, you know, bed blockers, the CPO uh, shareholders. They're not, they're not against progress, but they're, 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 they're there to protect the spirit and the culture and the history of Chelsea Foot Club. And they will do what's in the best interest of the club because they are died in the wool uh, supporters. And they've been going for many, many years, many of them. And they have the best interests of the club at heart. They may well want to move if it's the sensible thing to do. So there we go. But we don't know. But if you don't have a share, you can't ever say. It's that simple. Uh, 110 quid for an electronic share and about 175 quid for a framed share signed by a Chelsea player. In that instance, it's Frank Lampard. So there you go. Uh, if you want to uh, know more, go to uh, chelseafc.com forward slash Chelsea hyphen pitch hyphen owners. They're on social media at pitch owners. And they uh, can be emailed comms at Chelsea pitch owners dot com all very simple right we will be back in a very very short while for part two real fans real opinions i'm jason cundy and you're listening to chidge and the boys on the chelsea football fancast total nutters and proper chelsea There you go. Welcome back. I'm Stanford Chidge. This is the Chelsea Fancast. Uh, all's well that chill well. Uh, episode number 1120. And uh, yes, uh, the, the sagacious uh, Jonathan Kidd is with me tonight, of course. Oh, I love that word. Hello. Mm, hello. And uh, the apps, I mean, JK said this in part one, and, and he's, he's not wrong. Uh, uh, this gentleman is one of the finest, nicest people you will meet on the Chelsea beat. He is the legend that is Marco Worrell, one of my favourite people, that's for sure. Hello, dear boy. Uh, too, kind, too kind. There we go. We love you, Marco. You know that. Yeah. I love Planet Chelsea. You do. You do. You're all so lovely and positive. I, I love your uh, posts on social media when you, 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 there's a, there's a wonderfully philosophical tone to them, but there's always an air of positivity. You know, uh, if ever, if ever, if there was a song to fit your mindset, Marco, it would actually be Blue Tomorrow. You are such a firm believer in the fact that there will be a Blue Tomorrow and it'll all be all right. You oh. know? Yeah. I love that. I love that. Uh, so there we go. Right, we've got part two now, and uh, we're going to delve into the Chelsea versus Leicester match a little bit more. And uh, I just wanted to talk about uh, the subs. Um, it was very interesting, isn't it? Because I'm not usually that bothered about, you know, when he made... I don't get too aerated about it, but I have to say, at Tool, with about 60 minutes gone, I'm thinking, mate, mate, mate make some substitutions for fuck's sake, make some substitutions. And he didn't. Um, he didn't until, if my memory serves me correctly, and I have to I have to zoom in. Oop, oop, too much zooming in on my script. That's a bit of a, an occupational habit, hazard. Uh, he made his first one uh, on 78. Is that 78 or 76 minutes? Which was uh, Mudrick for, sorry, Chukwemeka for Mudrick, which I didn't really approve of because I thought, well, Mudrick was doing all right. And if anybody was going to go off, surely it has to be Sterling. And then he brought Madueki on, on 86 minutes for a aforementioned Sterling. And then Chilwell got in uh, on uh, 91 minutes, I believe. Um, on the bench. He sits on the bench. Fuck it. And why didn't anybody at Stamford Bridge sing Ben Chilwell's won the European Cup, which is what we normally oh. sing for Ben Chilwell? I thought it was very poor, Marco, I've got to say. Yeah. What can you do? Um you know, I thought Mudrick deserved to stay on, as I said. Um, but and I thought, actually, interestingly enough, I mean, I wrote in my notes that Chuck Wemeka basically screwed up every involvement he was involved in until he scored that superb goal. Uh, I mean, Cole Palmer's back heel, absolutely world class. And and, and actually, Chuck Wemeka finished it really, really well. Um, and then Madueki, what can one say? I mean, <laughs> it that went in so quick, I, I didn't really see it. I mean, I saw, I saw him with the ball, and then I saw the ball on the back of the net. 
And I thought, how did that happen? I had to watch it when I went home. I think it had a slight deflection from what they were saying on the telly, but it was an absolute worldie, whatever way you look at it. So, And I thought Chilwell made a difference when he came on, particularly whizzing down the left as he does, the wing commander. So when you look at it in that context, JK, um, I mean, I said, did he make the subs too late or was he spot on? I mean, you can say that actually the subs he brought on made a, made a really big difference, didn't they? So what do we know? <clears throat> I thought that they were really affected by the sending off. Um, and I thought they, they'd they actually, I didn't think they were fit enough. Because, why, uh, why did he get sent off, by the way? I mean, that was such a confusing few minutes because first of all, I thought it was a penalty. And the fact the ref did give a penalty, I thought. And then it was a free kick. And then it was like a yellow card. Oh, no, actually, it's a red card. What on earth was going on? More bloody VAR nonsense than us to not do with the challenge. If it's, if it's a challenge that's supposed to have been trying to get the ball, they give you a yellow card. If it's just a trip, it, it's it's a red card and it stops the goal because right. he's then he's then stopping a, a goal-scoring situation. If, if that had been inside the box, would he not have got a red card because that would have been double jeopardy? I got a yellow card. Yeah. The ref got the ref, got, the ref saw it as a penalty yeah. and gave and a yellow, yellow card, yeah. which was the correct decision. Yeah, VAR Apart, changed VAR it. VAR overturned it. So VAR made it a free kick and therefore a red card. Correct. Absolutely mind-boggling. If, if only they could actually bother to tell us, it would be so interesting, wouldn't it, JK? Yeah, that would be fantastic, wouldn't it? it if would. they did they do it in American football, they explain exactly what they do. They do it in rugby, they do it in cricket. Yeah, I'll tell, yeah. You, what, I'll tell you what is interesting, actually. Bizarrely, I mean, I, I, I can't say I'm a fan of VAR, but if you watch any of the Champions League games, the VAR decisions seem to be a, take a lot less um, in, in Champions League games than they do in Premier League games. Um, I only know that because I watched a few games. I wasn't feeling well during the week, so I watched a lot of football, including I actually watched... Well, I, I I only saw the second half and the extra time bit of the um, United Liverpool game, but I saw all the quarter the quarterfinals, obviously including ours. So it was just interesting. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of watching football on telly, um, but I did watch a lot of European and domestic football over a very short period of time, and it's just interesting to see how the games. Um, refereed at different levels. So I, I, I just think, I don't know. I mean, it's not going away, VAR, but it could be a lot better in the Premier League. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, I, I, I agree with you, JK. I mean, I think, I think. well, you, you, were, you were kind of intimating that Leicester's heads dropped a bit after the red card, whereas I just thought we had a bit more space to attack. And, it, you know, it's, it's, it, the, I mean, one would, I mean, you know, the reality is, and I mean, we can moan and be miserable as much as we like, but, you know, the stats actually bear testament to the fact that in reality, we, we battered Leicester. I mean, yeah. we had a, I mean, without getting all, you know, statty about it, we had 4.33 XG to 0.65. If that's not battering a team, I don't know what is. I think so, you hit the nail on the head at the start, Chidge. They, they, were, they were shit, basically. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think J.K. can take the credit for that one, uh, oh. but but I don't I don't disagree in the least. I mean, what I would say, what I would say actually, you know, because we we've watched this side obviously all season and last, and they are very young, they are inexperienced, they get they're like racehorses, they get spooked very very easily, and you know, you know, being completely on top of Leicester, being two nil up. Then going back to two nil, two all, two all with a ridiculous uh, own goal. You you could you could. I mean, I actually thought their heads dropped after that, which is what allowed Leicester back in to get the equaliser. To be fair, it's but, definitely Desarzi. Chich yeah. was spooked by that, expert, which anybody would be. Yeah, you yeah, of course he was. All television audience and and he's thinking, oh my goodness, what have I done? He's well, thinking, oh my god, I've just done that on BBC One. Yeah, my mother will exactly. never forgive me. Yes. We've all been there, JK. We've all been there. But you know, yeah, I, I thought I thought they could have crumbled, but they didn't actually. And I thought they actually showed quite a lot of character to come back in that. I mean, you know, they won four two with a goal in the absolute last minute. But you know, they came back, they carried on, and they got the result. And I think that I think we need to say that, you know, even if they I left it late. I didn't think there was much evidence of Connor in the match, which I yeah, found. But Connor, very 
Uh, yeah, I had an argument with somebody in the pub about this. I can't remember who, so uh, forgive me, for whoever it was. Um, but I, I think it was actually Matt Jazz, funnily enough. It was Matt Jazz. But Connor was playing in a much deeper role, uh, yeah. obviously, because he had to play in the Enzo role. So, therefore, he was doing a lot of the covering, a lot of the intercepting, a lot of the running around, a lot of the dirty work, you know, the donkey work. Uh, he was getting forward a bit, but he wasn't doing as much as he normally was Marco. No, I was just going to say, it's interesting that we're 55 minutes into the show, and that's the first time Enzo Fernandez has been mentioned. Who? But I don't know that's a, a good thing or a bad thing for Enzo. Um, because I, I was actually going to say a, a couple of minutes ago, do, 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 do you both think that we actually missed Enzo in that game and it would have been a bit more um, cohesive? But I, I'm not so sure. No. I, I, I'm not so sure at all. Not so, at all. I don't know I what that to means. judge when you're playing because, as you said earlier, and I said earlier, they were so bad that I, I, I find it very tricky to make any judgment, and and also about even us playing better. And I think we are some of us, some of the players are playing better, but you, I find this is a very, once again, it's a very low bar to to relate to because, um, as, as with Leeds, they're just not very good. I thought Leeds and, were better than Leicester, actually. I thought the other view, I agree. But we had more of a hard time because we still we they were we were under the cosh and still managed to score that um that Connor goal, didn't we, in uh, in injury time. But yeah. um I, I felt it was it was inevitable that we would win it once their guy was sent off, just because they all they did was defend squeakily, you know, they just didn't look as if they were going to get the ball out very often. And I and I have to say, what, what was good about Madweke's goal was when he was given the ball, he sort of staggered over it initially. And, well, he did, uh, didn't he? well, actually, that threw the defender, I think. <laughs> yes, it was I mean, do you not think? Because he, he kind over. of went behind him, didn't it? And he had to go back. Yeah. So the defender went with him, and then actually he did really, really well because he quickly he moved. Did two step overs, didn't he? He did, yeah. he did that. He, that was a very similar goal for me as the one he scored against Luton. Which he set yeah. himself up and then had a dip, you know. So um, uh, I think the three big games for me for him have been Luton Villa and uh, and coming on at this stage. But it's difficult because he was so bad against Palace. You just wonder if if an opposition sets up to to stop him and close him down, whether he can't deal with it. Is that because he's a youngster? You know, I, I don't know. is it is it now that we should just say, all right, we're seeing improvement. This team has got to two semi at a final and a semi final. And there is the possibility if we kick on a bit, we might make seventh and we might therefore be in the uh, the, the the Europa Conference. Would that be considered a, a decent season? No, oh, I, I think it would have. We, we talked about this, didn't we, uh, the other week? Yeah. And I think I think frankly, you'd have you'd have to say that. I mean, it look. It's it's not as good as Tuchel's last season because Tuchel finished in the top four and lost by a Nats cock. In, in two finals. And we remember we haven't actually got to the final yet. We'll talk about that in a minute. But if we were to get I mean, even if we if we if we bow out against City and we got to the caribou, it's better than last season. That's for yeah. sure. You know. And I and I, I have you right actually, man. And by the way, just to go quickly back to, to Madueki, I, I will pick up this point in a minute, I promise. But going back to Madueki, I think what we saw from him you know, he's got that in him, Marco. And that is why I would pick him. And I have been for weeks in my team selections. I've been picking him ahead of Sterling because yeah. he's got that in his locker. He can create a goal out of nowhere. And OK, he screws up a bit. But Sterling screws up a bit. So I, I right now, if you're going to go balls out for youth, I'd rather have Madueki in there knowing that he's capable of doing that. Would you? I think, yeah, I, I, I think the other thing is, there's a lot of players, a lot of players in that current Chelsea squad who feel they have something to prove because they're not getting enough game time. Mm. And Madueki's one of those. Yeah. Um, you know, and you can see that when he gets on the ball, he's looking to beat a man. Um, he, he's bang up for it. And unfortunately, you know, you look at Sterling just to go back to that, and you don't see the same desire, you don't see the same hunger. Um, and, you know, maybe why would you? And, um, you know, ultimately, <coughs> Pochettino, this it, this is all on Pochettino. So he's he's been working with these players, you know, for, for, for a, 
what, where are we now? Eight months or whatever it is now. So, you know, it wasn't like there was another avalanche of players in January. He's got these players. Um, he's making the decisions. And as he said, you know, I'm the coach. I pick the team. And, and on that point, you know, he stands or falls by his decision. So if he's going to be stubborn, as, a, as I kind of, you know, was, was saying yesterday, um, and be pig-headed about his team selection, then, you know, we, we're going to run into more problems because you're right, you know, uh, you know, even if Mudrick was tired, which I don't believe he was, there's a, why, why take him off? We haven't got another game for two weeks. Yeah. He's not doing Ukraine a favour, is he? You know, I bet if he plays for the Ukraine, um, in, in if they've got games in the international break, he'll play, although he'll play the full 90 in both those games because he's kind of an important player to his country. Um you know, and that's the difference. Um, and you know, and I, I think Madueki is deserving of um, more game time just based on what he's doing. And the only way these players will come on, I mean, you can see now, I don't know, <laughs> Caicedo is because he's playing every week, it's taken him a while to, you know, I still don't think he looks like a hundred million pound player, but it, but he looks like a player. Um, and you know that that's important. I, I think, you know, we haven't mentioned him yet in the show. You know, Malagusto uh, has made that right back, that right sided position his own. You know, nobody talks about. I mean, it's incredible that nobody talks about Reese James anymore because he's not been around for injury. But you know, if if they were looking to balance FFP books. Um, <coughs> in the summer, and Real Madrid came in with a hundred million quid for Rhys James. You'd probably be thinking, "Well, <coughs> maybe, maybe why not?" Because we haven't seen enough of Rhys James um, to kind of miss him, really. You know, Malagusto's been so good, and the kid's only twenty. So you know, there's there's a tick in the box. Cole Palmer's a tick in the box. So the, there's a lot of positives in that Chelsea team. Um, but what we don't need is a stubborn manager um, saying I'm the coach and not picking players maybe um, on the merit they deserve for out of stubbornness. I, I don't know. Well, we think, don't, we're not. Sorry, well, can I say? Going, yeah, I, of course. I think, yeah. I think what, what we wanted was a slight element of ignominy for Sterling. I know it sounds dreadful, but as fans, we wanted the worst player on the pitch to be taken off. <coughs> we didn't want somebody who'd actually not done badly, Mudrick. And that was the, that was the problem. And that's why um, I think everybody booed him. And I think I think Poch wanted to you be... You don't respected. know what you're doing. Indeed, indeed. And, and that chant as well. So, uh, and I think that's normally the case, isn't it? If a player's very bad... He gets taken off and, and he deals with it somehow. Whereas in this instance, the person who got taken off the first wasn't the worst player on the pitch, hadn't missed all the chances. So there was a kind of rumble around all of us thinking, well, that's not that's not fair, is it, on, on Mudrick? David, his... Flott, David Flotz has just said that Mudrick was stretching if you watch the game again. Yeah, yeah, OK. Yeah, I mean, I must Which I didn't realise. I have to say, I was with you, JK. I didn't realise that. Yeah, But maybe, no, I... maybe, maybe he was right. I get it, but still, nonetheless, for for this, those of us with you know lesser eyesight than than David, um, uh, it, it's the fairness of it. You know, it's that kind of basic fairness of thinking he's he's not played badly. Why is he coming off first? Why is the player who was made? Uh, well, he, was, he could have put Madueke. He could have he could have done. He could have brought. He could have if if Mudrick was struggling a bit, which I didn't realise. But you know, Chukwemeka for Mudrick was a like for like. Then he could have brought on Madueki for Sterling at the same time. He didn't. He waited another 10 minutes, pretty much. So it's very odd. Um, I mean, look, we don't know what happens on the training pitch. We don't know what the relationship is between the manager and the players. Um, I mean, they may see things differently than us. They they probably have more of a view or a clearer view than we do. But, yeah, it does sound a bit dumb. I mean, going back to Marco's point, uh, JK, he's absolutely bang on and – you know, Gusto is turning into a hell of a player. Palmer is turning into a hell of a player. 
Uh, we've got Gallagher, who has had a phenomenally good season, and I think he's he's, he, he's one of our players of the season. Uh, Jackson is improving. Mudrick is imp improving. Moises is improving in his own way. Um, there's actually, you know, there's there, there's. I I don't know about 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 you, but I think we're beginning to turn a corner slowly. I still think we're capable of two steps forward, one step back, but I I I just think there's something beginning to change. But it's difficult, isn't it? To once again, it's expectation. It's wanting the team to be better because of all the money that was spent on them, and and it's it's. But yes, I think if you give in to the fact that we've you know it's being dinned at us by the manager in particular, who is being very un. Um, sympathetic to the to the to the supporters for me, and he's just saying, as he says in the press conferences, you know, it's it's taking place. It's slow. It's a project. He says that, and 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 I wonder whether that's one of the reasons why he's not interested in coming to applaud us because he's just thinking, well, I'm part of this process. It will get better, and if we start putting together excellent performances and several very good victories against decent teams, whether he will start then thinking, well, I've got my foot in the door here. I'm going to stay for some time. I will now demand respect from the supporters. But at the moment, he comes across as being a, a bit of a cold fish as regards us, particularly if he makes statements like that. I'm sorry, but that's that's the way I feel about it. You know? Do you think he likes us? Do you think he likes us, Marco? I don't. Well, I, 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 I don't know. I think, you know, just building on what JK said there, he could be looking at, he only got offered a two-year deal, didn't he? So he's basically it's pretty much a year through that. And let's face it, I don't know. I think who knows what the owners are going to do in the summer transfer window, because if they, you know, kind of bring five or six players in again and shake it up that much, it's just going to create another kind of maelstrom, you know, in the dressing room where you're kind of thinking, well, it, now, now the manager's got to, now he's got to figure out once again who his best team is. Um, and I still don't believe that, you know, in eight months, Pochettino's figured out his best players in, in their best positions, even when he's had his hand turned by substitution, sorry, by injuries and suspensions. Um, you know, kind of like, you know, the, the Malagusto thing is kind of, that that's only happened because of the Reese James injury. It's, it's not... It's not because Pochettino's realised what a great player Malagusto is. Um, he wouldn't have been anywhere near the team if James was was fit. So I, I don't know. I, I, I just it, it, I've got optimism for what potentially could lie ahead, but it, it could take a lot longer than um, than pe a lot of people have the patience for. It seem to have. The patience for any more at Chelsea, as we as we saw yesterday, um, you know, it's kind of like you're talking, and on social media, it's like it's game by game, isn't it? It, it? You know, people flip flip flopping, and um, I don't know. I think that's just the way of the modern world, isn't it? There's this there's is no a modern place. world. Yeah, Couldn't help it. Sorry, but uh, you know, I I don't know. <laughs> I, I I don't do it. Do it. Do I personally? I thought Pochettino was a good appointment <laughs> when he was given the job. Um, I thought, mate, I did too, I, because I thought he was the best available in terms of experience, in in terms of Premier League, in terms of the Champions League, managing big players. Whether you like it or not, okay, he didn't bloody win anything, but he got Spurs. He got Spurs to a Champions League final. But he I mean, also come on. But he also was the manager when the term Spursy was coined. Well, yeah, um, yeah, I know. You know and, and, and it does make me laugh because more and more now, you know, people are saying, well, it's Pochettino, isn't it? I mean, I've got, I've got yeah. a couple of mates who are, who are Spurs season ticket holders and it's just like, you've got Pochettino, that's it, you know. He's, he's a nice guy, but... Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, I don't know. It's football, isn't it? You know, sometimes you just end up believing all that stuff. I mean, you know, when 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 we went from two nil up to two two, and people got the fucking hell, Spursy or what? Um, <laughs> I mean, it, it's funny, but it isn't because he's the bloody Chelsea manager. I know. I know. Um, and the worst thing, you know, 
it's kind of if if we if we'd have lost to Leeds, um, I, I think it would have been the sword of Damocles was sort of waiting. I think in in the background, and um, he would have gone, and God knows what that would have meant um, because you know I, I I don't I don't believe that. <laughs> You know, there's a lot of talk about De Zerbe, um and Chelsea plundering Brighton again. But, you know, clearly he's not the right man um, for, 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 for this job, just based on, you know, you watch some of the Brighton games. Um, so I don't know. You know, it's kind of just stick with what you've got and see what happens. And, you know, as you said earlier, what cons what would constitute a good season obviously winning the FA Cup um and you know having having to beat Manchester City in the semi-final to get to the FA Cup final and then winning it potentially against Man United um you know or Coventry or Coventry well, no, but that that would constitute a pretty I'd be happy with that um would I be happy if we lost to Man City and finished seventh not really to be no. honest with you, um, why, no. why would you be happy? No, um, you, you you wouldn't be emotionally. You wouldn't be happy. But I I think I think you know I'm afraid we all suffer from this in a sense. But I think there's a collective denial of reality um, at the moment. And the reality is is that Clear Lake, for good or ill, have decided to rip it up and start again, and uh, basically turned us into a mediocre mid-table club at the moment. So uh, this is why I think about half an hour ago, whatever, we were saying, well, look, you know, this is better than last year because that is the fact. It is better than last year. And actually, we can see some improvement in the players as well. Is it is it what we've been used to for 20, 30 years? No, it's not. You know, and that is also a fact. But, you know, I mean, I th I, you can't expect us right now, the Chelsea that we have right now, is not the Chelsea that we would expect to go and win a semi-final and go and win the final. That I mean, we expect to, win in, to be in the top four or win the league. We're not at that club at the moment. You could argue, though, you know, yeah, we are better than we were last season, but you could argue that quite strongly that the only reason that we're better than we were last season is because of one deadline day signing in Cole Palmer, who's well, yeah. kind of, you know, if you, if you take... Palmer's goals and assists out of Chelsea this season were fucked. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, th there's no two ways about it. Um, you know, and yeah, I mean, Christ, the owners spent so much money. Um, you know, and there's, if you, if you believe what you read, you know, that, that was, you know, that was all planned, the par pursuit of Palmer. I, I, I don't believe a, a word of it. I think we got lucky, mate. Well, we did, yeah, exactly that. Um, I read that so, we would have been in for the Arsenal player, the double-barreled name Arsenal player, and it was turned down. And so they went, "Oh, we must get somebody because the Gordon not Smith one. Rowe, not Smith Rowe." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, bloody hell, mate! We dodged a bullet there. Yeah. Good oh, grief! Yeah. But well, yeah. Palmer's been a revelation. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. I think. I think the the interest in the, the, it's always interesting, isn't it, at Chelsea? that we never make things easy for ourselves. But in the past, what we got used to with in the Abramovich era was that success was a part of the upheaval. So every time there was a managerial upheaval, there was success yeah. on the back of it very, very quickly. What we're seeing at the moment is upheaval 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 and we're just not getting that in me there's not there isn't that bounce and i think the reason for that is um simply down to to quality whereas kind of you know there was kind of like a laser like precision about what abramovich did in terms of um some of the managerial hires that he made the players that he bought in, um, you know, it was kind of, it was, it, there was just a different way of doing it. And obviously the new owners have come in and we're doing it this way. And that's fine if it works. But 
it isn't really working at the moment. So I think we've got we've got the rest of this season and see what happens. And if it's just, you know, we lose the FA Cup, we don't win the FA Cup and stumble to seventh. And then, OK, so we're back in Europe. Next, next season has to be an improvement. Um, but I think next season would need to be a significant improvement because there's already rumblings of discontent about the owners. Um, people aren't happy, supporters aren't happy for a number of different reasons. And if if we just start stumbling along, you know, into me, a mediocre world of averageness, then I, I, I'm not really sure what the way forward is because all that's happening at the moment is we've we've been leapfrogged in a number of areas by quite a few teams now. You know, when when Abramovich bought Chelsea, it was Arsenal and. Manchester United were the two elite sides in the Premier League. Um, Chelsea broke that axis up. Then we had Manchester City get money, come to the table. Liverpool finally sorted their lives out, came to the table. And now we've seen, <coughs> you know, Newcastle, Villa, um, they're all, you know, well-organised clubs and also clubs like Brighton that are very well run. That, you know, these, these other teams that, we're normally the always in the middle of the pack and now have now moved up. So, you know, the top four isn't, it's, it's not easy, you know, and obviously you've got to put Spurs and us, uh, Spurs into that equation now, unfortunately. So there's a, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of self entitlement in the Chelsea fan base at the moment. We should be there, you know, and <laughs> I think that's a dangerous game in in the, the you know the way things are at the moment because you don't you know it's bad when you're at a game and the crowd turn on the manager um which, which is what's happened now you know the next thing will be it'll, they'll turn on the owners um people start squabbling amongst themselves and and it's a hard road back from that especially when you've got an ownership group that aren't really in tune with um, the, the, the fan base or, or I, I, I very much doubt the dressing room. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying that. That's just my opinion. <laughs> Who's You know, I've been around Chelsea for a long time, talked to a lot of people, obviously, on a match day. Uh, the stall come from all over the world and everybody talks about Chelsea and you get... You get to hear a lot of different opinions, but there's a uniformity to to what you're hearing now, and it, and it's 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 not it, it doesn't all go well um, because nobody you know that blue tomorrow that I always see I, I I still see it in my head, but I'm not quite sure how attainable it is because the whole mindset of the football club um, has changed out of all shape um, mm. in the last couple of years. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the, the mentality is very interesting, the whole process, the mentality. of the <laughs> But don't you think um, that with a couple of purchases, if they happen to, I don't know where they get the money from, um, it could change? Do you think if they, if they do buy a decent striker and they do buy a creative midfielder to go with the others, or oh, I don't know what it would be from a def what, what bloody the, defender, mate. I was about to say, is it the defence? <laughs> no, but I, I, you know, we're, we're then in a situation. If Reese James can't, I, mean, I agree with you completely. What you said earlier, Marco. If if somebody came in and offered for Reese James because of his injury problems, you'd probably say yeah, because Gusto's been so excellent. And yet, if you've now got Reese James and Gusto playing, do you give uh, Reese James a go in midfield? You know, is that mm. a possibility for him? Uh, if he's going to have a season, but we don't know. I and mean, there are theories at the moment they might give Reese James a go for a couple of games towards the end of the season. Well, let's hope we're in a position. Not yeah. to give you, and you know, and, uh, we need to be three up. And uh, um, he's and, a better and, footballer than Moises or Enzo. Yes, he is. Yes, I think. So I think what will be what will be interesting this summer is if the owners. <coughs> I can't believe for one minute that Pochettino hasn't had a discussion with Egg Barley and said, "Look, I need one of these three players who's a striker. One of these three players." 
um, who's a defender, and one of these three players potentially who's a goalkeeper, um, because they will bring the experience that we need to be able to bring these kids through. So I cannot believe that Pochettino hasn't had that discussion or any other manager that they might be talking to um, about replacing Pochettino. And I'm sure those discussions go on all the time. But if if the owners are, are so set in their minds that they want to go down this youth, youth, youth route, oh, we're going to find that out this summer, aren't we? So, you know, it's that that's where the concern is. You know, if, if they say, you know, if they come out and say, look, yeah, we, we agree. We actually agree. We do need, you know, like a, a couple of players who are in the prime of their career, proven, injury free, um, who, who do the job that they're uh, purchased to do. And they prove that by going out and buying them. Then, you know, in my opinion, that's a good thing because it, it's just fucking common sense. You know, we're not, we're not a baseball team in Los Angeles. We're a professional football team in in London, England, and 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 you know, things are done differently in in this sport. So I, I don't know. It's it's on them, isn't it? It's like a lot of things are on the owners now. You know, the price of season tickets for to to who who they buy. It's all on them, um, and you know. The, the one thing that never lies is the Premier League table. So, you know, you look at that and we are in the middle. You looked at it last year and we're in the middle. Um, so that's 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 not good enough. Uh, yeah. Wise words, Marco. You're on fire tonight, mate. That's, uh, I mean, you can tell the quality of the guests by the, uh, the, 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 the little amount that JK and Chidge say for about the last half an hour. So there you go. We've been wrapped listening to that. He's talk a lot. So I think your point about the fact that actually you're in a you're in a arguably a fairly unique position for a supporter because you know being on the stool all afternoon before a match, you're right. You get you get to hear so many varied opinions from all over the world. So that's uh, yeah. I have you bang on bang bang on the money there, mate. Now listen, boys. Uh, we are in an FA Cup semi final, which is not to be sniffed at. Now, as I recall. I just had a quick look at uh, transfer Mircht, and um, I think I think this might be something like our 60th semi-final. Um, while one of you's talking in a minute, I'll count how many semi-finals are, uh, as in you know where we didn't go on to get to the final. There are, but I my guess is that we've probably been in 60 uh, finals. Uh, and therefore, sixty semi-finals, and we probably only lost about ten of them. So I'm going to count in a minute while one of you's talking. But you know, it's not to be sniffed at, particularly in these rather surreal times that we live in with with uh, Chelsea uh, Chelsea Football Club at the moment. Uh, and of course, um, the cold ball ended up in Ian Wright's hand, so I believe. And of course, we drew uh, Man City, arguably the best team in the world at the moment. Uh, but J.K., a team. Uh, against whom we have done very well this season. They have not beaten us, and there are not many teams either in Europe or the Premier League who can say that. So I say we have a chance. This is not a done a done deal, mate. That we have a chance of beating them. <coughs> I, agree, I agree with you completely. But once again, it's dependent on which team turns up, isn't it? And um, uh, and his selection. Let's hope he doesn't pick Sanchez. Let's hope uh, he doesn't pick Sterling. Let's hope that he doesn't ask Sterling to take the penalty. Um, Let's hope that uh, he makes some decent substitutions. Let's hope that he doesn't get the hump with us supporters and uh, and chooses a side that can't beat them. I know he wouldn't do that. I'm just being ridiculous. But um, um, uh, yes, I think I think there is there is hope. We seem to elevate our game, which is is very praiseworthy for the team. I, I'm, uh, but you know, as as we've been saying, you, you who knows in this Jekyll and Hyde season, Marco? Who on earth? What, to what team will turn up in the final? I mean, uh, in the semi-final, I should say. I'm <laughs> getting ahead of myself, but yeah, we're 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 good enough to um, to uh, to get a result out of it because that we've we've particularly the um, performance at um, uh, at uh, I was going to say Main Road at the Etihad, where we uh, where Sterling, bless his cotton, so scored a fantastic goal, and we played out of our skins. So. Um, 
it's not a it, it's not a it's not a done deal it's not a disaster um it's not something that we should prophesy as being a walkover for them at all because it's it's so dependent on on the mentality of the team whether it will they have been positively affected by losing in the other final will some of them were nervous as he said in his press conference some of them didn't sleep the night before will they now be will this be great experience for them as he similarly said in the presser will this be something that um they're now prepared for and may be capable of finishing off in in um uh, in in 90 minutes as opposed to four, quite four interesting the... that say so, yeah yeah city play um Real Madrid in the second leg of the Champions League just before or midweek before the FA Cup semi-final. Intriguing. Yeah. So, uh, I, that, that will, that will probably... Mean, have they decided on the dates yet? No, I, I don't know whether they've said the Saturday or the Sunday. They haven't. I, don't I, know. I think our game will probably be on a Sunday because United aren't in Europe, are they now? No, you're right. Yeah, I, I think they'll... I think that'll move to... I think our game will be on a Sunday, but nevertheless, you know, if, if City pick up a couple, I know it's ifs and buts, but you know, if they, if they lose a couple of players, I mean, I watched their game against Newcastle, and they, they are they, they are the best team. There's, so, but but Chelsea have drawn twice against them this season and scored five goals and conceded five, but. Um, I, I don't know. There's a where you've got a game. There's always a chance. So I, I think we can give them a game, and if we win, that'd be brilliant. And what we've got going for us, of course, is nobody thinks we've got a chance. So well, um, yeah, it's like the Champions League final, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, and then last five season, nil, five nil. They kept saying to me, "They're five five." And when we were up in court, they're five. It's going to be five. Yeah, they got that wrong, didn't they? And the other thing is, actually, talking Champions League, <laughs> I think they'll be playing Real Madrid about three days before the final or something. I don't know. Marco <laughs> just said that. Oh, sorry, mate. I was trying to count how many finals and semi-finals we were oh, in. And, and I lost count. I lost count because I put my finger on something. And it was like <laughs> the Nesk. We saw your little face looking down, you know, and I doing know, lots of. I know. You, you, did, you did mathematic calculations, face. You know, it's you too difficult for me. I'll I'll tell you after the show because I can't rely on my finger. You know, it, it's too difficult. It's on my mobile phone. We've been in a lot of semi-finals and we've and we've won most of them. That I can tell you unequivocally, and that's that's since you know since 1905 it was going back. So my I don't know if it was 60 or whatever, but I will find out and tell you at another time. So, I mean, do you think we can beat them, JK? Yes or no? Once again, dependent on a variety of factors. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, we could beat them. Thank you. <laughs> Marco, yes or no? I think we can. I'm just looking. The last time we lost an FA Cup sign semi-final was 2012-13 season. Rafa, Man City. And the last time before that was 2005-06. Was that uh, Man U against Blackburn? Uh, up at Blackburn? No, it was... Uh, no, hang on. What, what was it? 2000. Who was that? Liverpool. 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 Liverpool at Old Trafford. Yeah, I missed the semi-final. That's what... Uh, that's what why I was getting confused. Um, listen, I can tell you two exclusively uh, that we will, in fact, win the FA Cup final this season uh, against Man United. Uh, and I can tell you why. Because there's a, there's an R in the month. No, because I cannot go. <laughs> I cannot go. I cannot be there. Because you can't hold the FA Cup final. No, because uh, I am going because I didn't expect Chelsea to get into the FA Cup final this season for obvious reasons. Actually, I just didn't know what bloody date it was. But uh, I am going to Edgebaston to watch the cricket with my best mate in a one day international, and. Uh, he figured it out when I went to see him in Oxford and get get went on this piss up I went to the other week, and he said, "Mate, you realise that uh, the FA Cup final? This is before I think we had. I think it was just after we'd beaten Leeds, so he knew we were in the quarter final." He said, "Mate, you know that the uh, the one day internationals in Edgebaston is the same day as the cup final, don't you?" I said, "I know." He said, "So I so I presume I won't be seeing you at the cricket then uh, if you get into the final." I said, "Well, mate, I don't know." 
And he said, so yeah, that means you you won't be with me. I said, mate, the fact that I said I don't know, you should take as a huge compliment. I said, if it was anybody else, I would have said, of course I won't be with you. But I don't think I will. And I basically said to my nephew, look, mate, if we get to the cup final, you can have my ticket because it, it'd be lovely for him. And I'm bloody sure we'll win if I'm not there because that always happens. So there you go. What are you wiggling your ears for? <laughs> Because Diane's just sent me a message on, <laughs> on Twitter saying, stop playing with your ears. <laughs> well, 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 I never. Well, I never. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, we've got a couple of very important things to talk about now before we, we let you all disappear. And the first one is this marvellous thing uh, here, which, as you can see, is a lovely picture that uh, that Mark Meehan got taken with Ryan St Sterling, who, as I said, Stinking the place out as a footballer, fantastic human being. Never let that be forgotten. Uh, the Super Poodle. Who's that with the hat? My, I'm, I, I, oh. Is that Cole Palmer? Cole Palmer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Connor Gallagher. So there we go. And they're all advertising the big Stamford Bridge sleepout, which is uh, on the 23rd of March. Very soon. Next Saturday. Yes, indeed. Now, um, give you the background on this. The Chelsea Supporters Trust are going to be supporting Stoll, uh, our next-door neighbours, and the Barons Court Project, which basically looks after homeless people in the area because this is all about uh, supporting the homeless. Very, very important uh, people to be get, you know, raising money for. Uh, and basically, you get to sleep out on the East Stand, the cold, hard floor of the East Stand, the little kind of, uh, kind of I don't know how you describe it, JK. It's the bit that runs underneath the stand, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the, yeah. The middle, the middle concourse. That's right. Anyway, it's bloody cold. I can speak from experience. Now, all money raised will be evenly shared out between these two great charities. Uh, it's going to be the 23rd of March, and the uh, it'll raise funds to enable vital work to end homelessness and support vulnerable and disabled veterans to lead fulfilling independent lives. Now, uh, last year, we uh, raised over 26,000 quid. Uh, we're hoping to do better in 2024. Uh, and as I said, it's a chance to sleep out under East East Stand at Stamford Bridge for a whole night. And it's a truly unique experience. It's a must for all Chelsea supporters. Uh, I've done it myself every year. And it's quite surreal if you can't get to sleep like most of us can't. Having a chat with your mate and having a very hot coffee and looking out on the Stamford Bridge pitch, which is under the funny little lights, like the, uh, the, the lights they get to grow the grass. It's surreal. Uh, and uh, there we go. Uh, you can still register to, uh, to, to do the sleep out. Just go to the Chelsea Supporters Trust dot com website. Uh, but if you can't do that, uh, then you can still donate. Now, I have to hold my hand up at this point because normally I do two things for the sleep out. One is I actually do sleep out uh, and join you all. And occasionally uh, via Rob, Robin, Robert, I've done it again. Robert Sinclair brings some, uh, um, you know, rather tasty oranges that have been doctored with vodka or... Um, and and as well as doing that, I do the you know tales from the shed around the campfire at home and uh, read lots of stuff. I'm afraid to say, and I say this with a lot of shame, I am doing neither. Uh, basically, we don't have any new books, so there's no no tales from the shed around the campfire. And uh, I managed to double book myself for next Saturday because I'm going up to uh, Wolverhampton with my best mate, the one I'm also going to the cricket with, um, and to, I'm going to go and see Jazz Coleman's uh, speaking tour and Q and A because I like killing joke and that's what I'm doing. So I'm sorry about that. I think by the same moment, if I'm missing out on the sleep out because I'm going to be with my best mate, Simon, and I'm missing out on the FA Cup uh, because I'm, if we get to the final, I think these are probably good omens, which in which case I will, I will feel less bad, but I do feel a bit bad. So I shall be donating generously to a few chosen people who are sleeping out. If you want to donate, you just go to justgiving.com <clears throat> forward slash campaign forward slash Big Stamford Bridge sleep out, and I will put that in the chat uh, room in a minute. So there you go. But uh, go and support it. You know it makes sense. So there you go. Right, I've just done that. Now the other thing that you really need to know about, of course, is this fantastic thing that is happening in June, June the twenty first to the twenty fourth of June, uh, to be precise. Which, of course, is the uh, the Chelsea Fancast World War One Battlefield Tour hosted by the absolutely bloody marvellous Alexandra Churchill uh, and uh, also Johnny Dyer and uh, Andrew Holmes, both great. All of them are, are fantastic historians. All of them are massive Chelsea supporters. Um, and it basically involves a very long uh, weekend visiting 
uh, the battlefields of the Somme and Ypres and all the uh, cemeteries, which are fascinating and very moving. Uh, spending a couple of nights in, well, a night in Arras and a couple of nights in Ypres. Great restaurants, lots of great drinking, lots of good people, all Chelsea. Me and Mr. Glover will both be there. I really commend this to you. It's a trip of a lifetime. If you love history, if you had relatives that fought or died out in the Somme or Ypres, this is a very good opportunity for you to not only go and see them, see where they fought and died, see where they're buried, but also to get some military historians who you will know and who you will love, who will do some superb research on telling you all of the events surrounding it. It's an absolute treat. So there you go. Uh, if you go to Historia, you can see it on the screen, but if you go to historiatravel.org forward slash copy hyphen of hyphen S 106 hyphen Belgian hyphen 1914 hyphen one, which is a daft URL. Just go to historiatravel.org. You'll find it. But uh, again, I, I don't know if I can put that in the, uh, in the, uh, the uh, uh, the chat because I can't. So there we go. But I commend it to you. Do it. You know it makes sense, boys. What do you think of those two things? Uh, the sleep out, Marco. I know you're quite involved. Have been involved with the sleep out in days past, and uh, certainly with the books and things, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think it's a good opportunity to commend highly the work done by Sir Mark Meehan for um, every year. For I think he was kind of the originator as far as Chelsea was concerned of the sleep out so yeah he's got my dosh and um got a few more sales of the tales from the shed book over the last few months which was published to raise funds for the sleep out last year um so they've gone in mr Meehan's kitty so if you're looking for somebody to sponsor um look for mark Meehan, who's at eddie mac bawa on twit yeah Definitely. And the uh, the World War One tour, JK, we can't tempt you this time. You, you managed to avoid it last time. You were supposed to be going, weren't you? I paid for it, Chich. I know. Yeah. Uh, um, <coughs> I think it's unlikely, unfortunately. You you said to me last time you were doing something else, so I think uh, yes, you were otherwise yes. engaged. A prior commitment, I'm afraid. Yes, it's, I know. It's tricky with an eight-year-old and, uh, and uh, a sprightly girlfriend who... Uh, uh, demands things of me that in the past I would have been very So keen. what's more demanding, the eight-year-old or the sprightly girlfriend? I'd say 50-50. Okay, that's quite a handful, mate. Very, very much handful. But can I say what a wonderful cause the uh, the sleep out is? And uh, yeah. as you said, Marco, um, huge kudos to Mark and huge kudos to everybody doing the sleep out. And um, I I will be donating as always. And I'm I'm very pleased that I would like to do it, but I'm a bit weedy. Uh, uh, having um, a history of asthma and pneumonia, and uh, uh, I don't really want to um, put myself through it. So I'm happy to to uh, uh, give give dosh to those that do for the uh, the, the brilliance. It, it's a fantastic uh, cause. So yeah. yeah, I'll be doing the same. I'll be spreading out uh, spreading it out amongst a few people that I know and love. Who uh, who are doing it? And uh, well, well, we'll be on air before then, which I'm about to tell you about. But uh, we'll wish you all luck then. Uh, in fact, yes, uh, it's about uh, time for us to say cheerio. So uh, I can tell you that we will be we will be back. We will be back on Friday, the 22nd of March. Uh, but why, Chidge? Why? There's no game next weekend. Well, because we thought we would. Um, I'm not not entirely sure what we're going to be doing yet. Either me and JK will be back on Friday doing an in off the post, which is favourite at the moment. But it being that um, we've got like about a week to get sign-ups for the World War One tour, uh, I'm mean, toying with the idea of doing a, a World War One tour special with Alex and Johnny Dyer and Holmes. Uh, but I need to like organise that and track them down. But you will know on Friday because we'll be on air whatever happens. So there you go. Um, of course, don't forget you can follow the show on all the social media at Chelsea Fancast. Me at Stanford Chidge. Jonathan at Jonathan Kidd and Marco at Gate 17 Marco. Marco, you have been absolutely fantastic tonight. You've been brilliant. Very sensible. <laughs> yeah, we both enjoyed your company immensely and what you had to say. Uh, lovely to see you as always. Thank you. Appreciate it. Also, pleasure to be on our show. <laughs> our show. Yeah. Our show. Damn right, mate. Damn right. There we go. And as for you, Mr. Kidd, an absolute disgracefully disgusting pleasure as always. Thank you so much. I think in future, when it's Marco's on, 
we should just have an enormous picture of him and let everybody ask him questions. Yeah, well, we could do a Q and A on Friday, but I've already got him on Monday. It's a bit rude to ask him again. And anyway, I know that Marco likes a beer in the East Cheam Social Club of a Friday night. Do you not, my friend? I have been known. To be <laughs> on the so this is why you never ever see Marco on a Friday preview show. No way. It's in his contract. <laughs> it's in his rider, mate. I tell you. <laughs> anyway. Both of you have been brilliant tonight. Uh, love seeing you as always. Uh, I may see you on Friday, JK. If this special with the war thing happens, I'll, I'll let you know, and then I'll, you can have the night off. But uh, knowing, yeah. knowing, trying to herd those flaming kittens, it'll it'll be me and you on Friday doing an in off the post. We've got loads right. of emails to get through. I won't cancel the evening, even on the Friday, just in case it suddenly all evaporates. I will try and let you know well before that. Don't you worry. Fair right, you. Right, you lovely people. Thanks for listening. See you next week. Until then, keep it blue, keep it carefree, and keep it chels. Up, 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 up